Hello, everybody, and welcome back to no. episode six. Six? Yeah, six. that sounds right. It's episode six of the One to Pass podcast. Joined back by Connor. <laughs> I'm still 50% of you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's not the 93%. He's a 50%. <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. But with that, we're going to have another great episode today. We're going to talk about set two Variana. So since we now got to see the triple rare and we know the skill, we'll talk about that a little bit. We can talk about what we can expect from this new one coming in set two. The triple rares for Stoikea, hashtag Care Bear, and uh, Branky's triple rare. And deck building and possible hybrid builds. This is a topic I'm excited for. I know, my, me too. I, I'm really excited. But before that, we get to get through the intro. <laughs> And with the cringiest transition into an intro ever, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about set two Variana. Ah. Well, actually, let's talk about set one Variana first. Let's talk about the triple rare. Finally got leaked, and uh, its skills are um, pretty much what people expected. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not out of the like completely out of the ballpark, but it's a really good effect. Mm -hmm. And again, I mainly have played Empire ever since we started doing this, but it. It's nice that it has more pressure, which mm -hmm. is ultimately what it needed. Yeah. Pressure of some sort. But the skill, it, it's nice that you can stack it on either the Trickstar or any overdressed state unit, which means it has flexibility in the future. Um, the restand on hit is nice, but it's probably never going to happen. No, that, it, all it is is to eat cards from hand. Yeah. But that does give us an idea of what to expect because we know that is probably going to be the same thing. It's probably going to be another grade three, and it's probably going to have the exact same overdress state, like the like conditions. I think all grade three Variana that come out are going to have that effect. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense. I'm just curious on what we with where they go from now because like they had a restand, a conditional hit restand. I would, think it would make more sense for. It would be nice if it was a just overdress, get a crit. But see, I don't. That would be nice, but I feel like. Every one of them should now have a condition for every dressed unit. Like the the one we have now has power plus five for every dress unit. Well, what if they gain a crit for every dress unit? I was going to say something more along the lines of if you have two units under it, it gets a crit because every dressed unit gets a crit. It's a little like that gets out of hand very quick because yeah, a three but, crit rear guard. Well, you got to understand there's no power. It's still just thirteen. That's a little different. I could see that. It's a very easy to attack to block. And then you're relying on, you know, having uh, well, it, Nirvana to power it up. It, it'll, it'll default to about a 23, which is still e it's reasonable. easy enough to block. Yeah. But, but three crit, <laughs> it per, potential for five crit pretty easily. Or, or, I did a bit better. Its original crit is equal to its dress. That's better. I like that. So if you just overdress on Trickstar, it's just one crit. But if you overdress on an overdress unit, it's two crit, and then three crit, and then further how much you want to just waste your hand away to get a bit more crits. Yeah, I mean, if you're going for for, for the last turn, that's the way to do it. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a little better. Yeah. I mean, I can see something like that. And I hear some people saying they expected to get drive checks on rear guard. Drive checks on rear guard becomes a little more outlandish. The, I like the deck as it is. Mm -hmm. It needs more draw power, so that would be nice. But everything you draw is going to be a Variana. <laughs> so you're going to want it in hand no matter what. You're not going to guard with it. Mm -hmm. and see, and that's the big issue. And see, my second theory is because, you know, it has two skills on the triple rare. Yeah. Its second effect is when this unit is placed in an overdressed state, uh, you can, like, CB2 to retire your opponent's board. Ooh. That would be nice. So it's a crit pressure and it board out your opponent, so it gives you advantage. Yeah, that's my own level theory. What about you? What do you think? What do you think? What do you? What do you want? What I would like, and I, I was thinking about this after we got Arcus, mm -hmm. is a grade three like it is, for every overdress unit under it, draw, <laughs> draw, Ooh. just draw, because what it needs the most is hand consistency. You're dumping your hand to play it all, mm -hmm. especially games like 
when we did the uh, the tag team. Mm-hmm. I played seven cards from hand <laughs> just so I could play. It's it's inconsistent. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. What if it had just like a really really bland effect? Okay, for one of the effects, just straight bland. The simplest you can get. CB one on attack retire. So, some that bland. Okay. But its consistent ability is that it has the abilities of the dressed unit when it's placed. That's not bad. It would give it resist from Trickstar. And it would also give it the Arcus on place draw two. It would. Or the Viriana effect of when it swings, it gains another plus ten. That's really good. I, I can see that. I would like it to be a Soul Blast instead of a Counter Blast to retire. But yeah, the deck already eats its Counter Blast way too much. I mean, but it's. if it already has that generic, that means it has two retires. Because if you have the other, the Great 2 variant of the Soul Blast 2. Yeah, that's a Soul Blast 3 to do. You're right. So you can Soul Blast 2, Counter Blast 1, retire 2, Rear Guard, then give it a plus 10. That could be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea a lot better. Because then it gives it more flexibility. It's like, okay, well. Now I can do this to do this and then get more multiple uses out of this. I'm just like imagining Arcus. Okay, now get my trickstar out of my deck. I Arcus draw two. Next turn, um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to kind of bust one to draw two again. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of cards out of that. I, I think it would be more, even if all it did was get the effects of whatever's under it. Mm-hmm. That's kind of overpowered because if you play the first grade three and then overdress it, now it's a multi-standing. If you got the Arcus under it, it gets plus 5k that turn and you draw two and it has resist. So just getting the effect of what's under it alone. Oh man, just think of it. Oh wow, that actually, yeah, man, you're right. That get out of hand because think of it this way. It gets all the abilities, right? That means you can stack the, tr- the triple rare from set one. All the 5K. Oh, wow. And on top of the grade two, that's probably underneath that also. Okay, yeah. More. I'm starting to think more or less, if they're going to do something like this idea, it's going to just get the effect of what's under it. Because resist, plus 5K for everyone. If it's normal variant, another plus 10K just because it's swinging the ability to retire. Mm-hmm. That's. If all it did was get the effect of what's under it, it would never leave the deck. I don't know. But that's our thoughts. <laughs> so let's talk about... Stoic Haya and Brent Gates triple rares. Care talk about, Bear. Let's talk about Care Bear. Let's talk about Care Bear. We're going to make the stick, by the way. Yeah, it's it's going to. It's it's already going around, which yes. is nice. Um, Care Bear is broken. Care Bear is broke. <laughs> um, out of our playtesting, the thing that hold Magnolia back was, yes, it was a lot of a lot of attacks. But the thing about the attacks was they were all small attacks. It's kind of like Aqua Force back in the day. You hit a tri- defensive trigger, oh, well. You either slowed them down or you completely stopped them, and it was kind of balanced. Yeah, it was definitely just stopping them flat out mm-hmm. for Stoikea because your your 13 attacks aren't going to hit. Because mm-hmm. your, your grade 1, I'm sorry, 13 to 18 attacks just aren't going to hit. And the only thing that really could attack would be the grade 2s that would use Soul Blast, but then you're wasting your Soul Blast to get them to even connect, and then it's still just a 5k block. Yeah, but Care Bear don't care. Care Bear don't care. Care Bear is like... This thing's going to get all the trigger effects, and then it's going to pass it on, <laughs> holding its hands with all of its friends, saying, here, have all these effects. Have all this power. And it's it, it quickly turns what would have been a 13 attack into a 73 attack. Yeah, he goes, let's just say for for some magical reason, you have a back row of Care Bears. Like, yeah. And, you're, and you Magnolia Persona ride. So all of them have plus uh, five, so they're all 15s. First one swings for 15, gives 15 to the other. So that Care Bear is now a... Um, 30. 30. That Care Bear swings, gives 30 to the other one. So that one's a 45. And it'll give 45 to whatever is swinging next. Yes. So say you have another 10K Gray 2, it's a 55. So you go 15, 30, 45, 50. And you're just scaling in you, power. It'll be a 65 because you Persona Ride in order to do that. Oh, yeah, you're and right. that's assuming you didn't hit any triggers to give the first Care Bear. Yeah, this is all just base powers. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> Care Bear is so It, it eats your damage for Counter Blast, but it will be the last turn. Because, it also eats your opponent. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no hand left after that. Either you die or you have no playback at all. But I love it. It's, it's fun. You guys, you, it, it, this is magical Christmas on you, but most of the time, just saying even one one uh, one of this card, um, 
it's still 15, including the trigger checks. Say you hit one trigger, it's 25 the something on the board. And that's assuming you didn't hit something like Mantis, which gives it another five, which it passes the savings on to you. Or in the you one of you say your opponent retires it. <laughs> you saw nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, say your opponent retires it, right? Well, you still have the gray two d uh, double rare. The on place from hand, counter blast two, soul blast one, call it back from drop and give it plus five. And it's the excellent thing to, in, no matter how you see it from your ride chain, you just want it there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing. The deck will guarantee you'll see at least one. Granted, it's only for Magnolia, which is the sad part, but <laughs> Magnolia, ooh. <laughs> yeah, Magnolia uses it to the fullest extent. It's, it's cheap, it's efficient, and from the get-go, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about Brankgate. Brankgate. So, okay, grade two, triple rare, that is... Continuous rear guard and guardian circle. If you have two units in prison in your prison, it gets power plus five and shield plus ten. It becomes a fifteen interceptor. Mm -hmm. Or guard from hand. Or guard. Oh wow! And that's, it's a fifteen attacker also. That's amazing. Its second skill is on place rear guard. Soul blast one. Choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and imprison it in your prison. For a soul. Oh wow! That works really well with the deck. Okay. See, I haven't actually seen it yet, so that's impressive. Yeah, so basically you're going, I pl uh, say you're on grade three. Yeah. You play, uh, you ride, you Snow's ability, counter blast one, suck up two rear guards. You already have your conditions, right? So you place down this on rear guard, soul blast one, get another one. So now you've got your Snow's conditions, and this is also a 15k attacker. Yeah, that's really good. So it can hit on its own on, on any of your opponent's vanguards. And then on top of that, if you need to intercept with it, it's a 15k interceptor. That gets a lot of that gets a really lot of mileage for just nothing. <laughs> there is a downside to it, and out of the little bit of playtesting we haven't shown this on camera for uh, the channel, but I'm sure we'll do it soon. Um, your opponent can dictate that because it is a prison, which means that your opponent can pull out of prison if there's one or less in prison. It doesn't gain anything. Yeah, and that's the trick. If there's one or less. So you can still leave one card in their prison. You don't have to take everything out just to knock it out of the power boost. Yeah. Which okay. really makes it really hard for the shield value. But if you take a lot, <laughs> if your opponent just puts on a whole board, you take five things, there's, those are wasting all their resources. You're more than likely going to have like two in there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty easy to... I mean, having a counter blast in order to make your, your wall less of a wall isn't as reliable as it sounds. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a really good card just for everything. Also, I love how after we've seen everything for um, prison deck, it's funny that the Soul Charge Three is now more relevant. <laughs> for yeah, the that's very nice. But yeah, I mean that's uh, that's my thoughts on it. It's really good. It was not what I was expecting. I was expecting a a triple rare uh, prison. You can get another prison from the way that most of the cards interact with prisons. But I mean, we'll take it. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a nice form of pressure. It does pressure your opponent into pulling out of prison so they don't have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And now they're, they're spending resources to get cards they've already played. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very good card. I mean, look at it this way. Um, Orphis, your tokens are 15s, and you saw how much work they put in. Oh, yeah, they, they are great. So, Anything that's 15 is great. So, yeah, this being a 15 alone is already good. So let's talk about deck building. Deck building, yes. Deck building. So... Since Overdress is now a nation-based um, gameplay and not clan-based, it gives us options to have different builds within different nations. And because of that, there is now deck building technically in the game. A good example of this is Stoikea. Yep. Stoikea has blitz orders, normal orders, and all these units. But you can choose to play these orders inside of different builds. You can have Magnolia, and you can still use the newest uh, order that got leaked for Zorga, which was retire two rear guards as the cost to put it, draw a card, put it into soul, and then uh, counter charge one. So there's your resource engine if you want it, and it can be played in any Stoic build. It doesn't have to be Zorga. And that's amazing. Same goes for the grade two double rare, the one that calls a card from drop. I mean, yes. You want to call things from drop in Zorga, but you also want to make a board in Magnolia, so it's a win-win. It's, it's very versatile, yeah. And we see that these ride lines are also not tied to specific names either. So if you really wanted to, 
you could technically do um, splash in parts of uh, Zorga's, you know, ride line into your deck or your ride line to kind of make things more consistent if you want to make, do it that way. How do you feel about deck building? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and part of the reason I like it is because future deck building can also be built on really easy. Uh, Orphist, if they make different set orders, all it does is look for worlds. Mm -hmm. You can just grab a world and then go back to whatever you actually want to run as your ace. Mm -hmm. um, with Dragon Empire, adding Variana, if you can figure out how to fit it in, would make Eugene a little more deadly. I mean, yeah, you can still run Variana and Trickstar inside your Eugene deck to give it some kind of pressure. Because yeah, Eugene doesn't really have a lot of power, but Variana has a lot of power. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you can if you can get out a Trickstar off of Eugene and mm -hmm. go, hey, here's a Variana, here's a 20 swinger, and you have nothing. <laughs> yeah. And you just got it off your top of your deck for free, so you're not like you're wasting your hand to get the thing out. Yeah, exactly. Um, and even more so with Keter, we were, me and Philip were talking, joking about this, but it's actually really true. Um, Bastion's amazing. Yeah. But he also wants to jack trick grade threes. Now, you can make your deck nothing but grade threes, right? But what if you can guarantee grade threes? Because the, the grade two from the ride line for uh, Hexa Orb is on place. Look at the top card put on top or bottom. So you can check to see if you're going to have a grade three. So you can run a couple of it in your deck if you want to. That's true. Or you could use the grade one, the um, the nun, that on place, rest, soul, soul blast one, look at the top two, put one on top and one on bottom. So you can help stack your deck that way. Yeah. They're not specific to these decks, so you can interchange these into making your deck builds more catered to your playstyle. Yeah, it helps with consistency. Especially, I mean, if you have good luck like yours or bad luck like mine, this can change things a lot. Exactly. But I, th I really like how this is because this is just set one. We still have like more sets, like probably another like five or six sets. Yeah, I mean, bro, we're gonna have more than that. We're gonna obviously. have plenty, but we're gonna have plenty. That's before we even really look into other ace units like Bastion that, mm -hmm. that are so versatile. Because any grade three that comes out, he's just gonna go, "Cool, I can use this no matter what." Exactly. And same goes for Zorga. I can use any order that Stoic gets any time down the road. And, and Orphus to some limit, if if they release more world orders, he can use those. Mm -hmm. Any future prisons. So it, it definitely makes it more of a versatile deck building, and I'm excited because we've never had this in Vanguard. No, we really haven't. Well, we've had it to an extent. We had it back at the very beginning, back when we had extreme format. But we saw what happened with extreme format. <laughs> I mean, even when when I started playing G, mm -hmm. from pretty much from G on, it was this is what you run because these triggers have a set effect for this boss. Mm -hmm. These rear guards have a set effect for this boss. You want this boss. You want these units. You have this ideal field no matter what you want to hit mm -hmm. for performance. Well, back in... They really locked themselves back in it back when... Uh, I want to say, was it Break Ride? Yeah, Break Ride. Yeah. Because uh, back then, you know, they were based on the uh, mechanics, the name of things, like Liberators, uh, Eradicators, all of this stuff that like, kind of make you forced to play these cards together. You can still play some Nurikami or some Gold Paladin card in there, but you're really not going to benefit unless you have go hardcore. And then when G hit, it got even more. Yeah, you had these generic units back in the beginning of G, and then we got introduced to keywords and then cards that required your main grade three in your name to do things. And it just really got really, really focused and really dry because when we got the V series, it's like, you play this, this is the only way to really play it. You can V series felt felt like if they had made OG Vanguard off of G. <laughs> v... I, I, I don't know how it filled up V-Series. At first, I liked V-Series. Oh, same. And I think whenever they introduced uh, second versions of your gifts, that's when things spiraled downhill. There was a lot of it. I mean, it was exciting at first because I thought, I can run deleters with all this crit with more crit. <laughs> And multi-attack, which was great. But immediately after the next set came out, I went, I hate this. <laughs> and that's even worse because, you know, it made it to where literally every set you're like, I get to play my deck for a month. And then it's going to be power creeped out. Hopefully we're not going to worry about this now because now literally any set can upgrade your deck. Which is very nice. And 
and it can upgrade it in different ways. If they release another prison, cool. If they release another Vanguard that uses the prison, cool. Well, I'm just looking at it from a generic standpoint. Your ride line. Yeah. Say you're playing Hexa Orb. You have two cards in your ride line outside of Hex Orb. Your grade one and your grade two. Your grade one says when you ride the grade two on it, you draw a card. And the grade two says when you ride the grade three, you look at the top three. Now, the grade two and the grade three together are really good because you can stack your deck. But can't CB one to draw one from your grade two to ride? You could get better. And the thing is that they were a lot of these ride lines don't need, some of them don't even require you to have a specific unit ride them. Like Zorga, if you just um, ride the grade one, it's just soul blast to draw two and then discard a order. If you don't, you discard two. Okay, well, draw draw two, discard two is still a filter. Yeah, that's re- that's solid. I mean, if you if you have a really bad hand and you're trying to look for pieces, it's still a solid you know option as a ride. It's starting in the ride line. Um, but you know, Keter can also obviously you're going to get more ride lines down the road or more grade one units. You can honestly put anything there. You don't have to put that grade one. I mean, with this on topic, if they release another grade one and two that work with Hexa Orb, to go off of your own example, mm-hmm. function slightly differently in some way, like both of them allow stacking or something, mm-hmm. then you have your option for what to play, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. And you're right. If, if they release another set that's completely unrelated for, for Orphist, again, going off of him with my example, mm-hmm. but it still uses world orders, you can put the grade one from his ride line in seek one out immediately on play because he doesn't need anything special. He mm. just looks for it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I find it interesting that we're going to get, like, to this point because, like I said, this is just set one and we're already kind of, like, brewing up just from set one. And then set two is going to add more to each of the existing decks and two new ride lines. Yep. And then we're probably going to go into a little hiatus for some uh, stuff for Lyrical Monasterio and the uh, collab sets because there's going to be a break in the anime for seasons, like a three-month break. That's a very good time to release those. And then we're probably going to get another couple of sets for that season. But as it keeps going on, you got more of this card pool, more things to think about, more ways to build these decks. And I'm just curious because I'm like, wow, we got so much versatility already, so many options. I'm like, you could do this, you could do this. I'm like, how are they going to up this already? They have options. Uh, As long as they continue to use... Nirvana is a good point of this. If they make another overdress set, not not Trickstar, not Variana, but other stuff that overdresses, Nirvana still can be used in it as a great optional Vanguard. Mm-hmm. It's a good selection. Plus, you could get a different ride line that does something other than Surge Out Trickstar. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's ways to grow it, but at the same time, it's like, man, like just the possibilities is like going through your head. The direction they choose to grow will be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Do they go, you know, big or do they go wide? Mm. I, I'm assuming they're going to go wide, not big, because like more options is better. Yeah. Because that gives people creativity, and also means that when you're going into a tournament, you're, you're when you flip over your starter, you don't automatically know what you're facing. It, it doesn't have to become a second Chrono Jet. Yeah, like it, the video that they showed a video on their cha- the YouTube channel today about them playing. Uh, I think it was Brant Gate versus Stoic Gate, and they were showing Magnolia versus uh, Snow. And it never clicked into my head about this. But when I saw it on camera, it really jostled me. And I was like, wow, that, that you can't do that. The grade one order for Zorka, the Soul Blast one, call a card from the drop and give it plus five. And it has to be grade, uh, equal to or less than your Vanguard. They played it in Magnolia to get Care Bear back out of drop. Oh, with power. Yeah. Yo. And you can do that because it's still a still AK card. It's, I feel like I feel like a kid in a candy store thinking about it like that. You're right. And then you get things that makes you think because the order that uses Alchemagic, you can still use it technically. So the order says cost is Soul Blast to look at the top four and call a card from the top to rear guard. If it's an Alchemagic, you get the call two and give them plus five. But you can still use it to Soul Blast 2, look at the top four call one. Uh, and especially Magnolia, which wants that optimization for the field. Yeah, that's really good. Mm-hmm. If you don't see Care Bear, four cards, chances to see it. Yeah. And then you also have the one, like I said earlier, the Retire. You can retire two rear cards to counter charge, soul, soul charge the order, and then draw a guard. 
you can still use that. It's a resource. It doesn't require, you know, specific things. Yeah, if you hit your triggers off of your ride line, you can just go, well, these aren't good anymore. Boop. But they're actually used for something. Mm -hmm. And then the one ghosty uh, order that got revealed, it was like give a, the blitz order that gives plus five and then bounces a rear guard that's not being attacked. That can be used in anything. It doesn't have to be Magnolia. It doesn't have to be Zorga. Like, you get things down the road. It's like, okay, cool. I want to protect this. Okay, they're, they're swinging at my Vanguard. I can use this both plus five and bounce it back. In Magnolia, it's really good because, you know, you can reuse the Grey 2 or you can reuse the uh, triggers that you call off the top of your deck. Anything that gets an on-place effect will be very good exactly. with that. That's what I was going to lead up to. It's like, yeah, any on-place effect with that order now is amazing because now you can just keep abusing this on-place effect. Yeah, that's really good. Imagine if Dragon Empire got something like that now that, uh, you know, if you needed something for Arcus. Yeah. I couldn't remember his name for a sec. I don't use this for a lot of these, but <laughs> I'm going to reiterate it again. Uh, Zorga. Yeah. Building on down the road. Yeah, we get any order that comes out down the road is going to be amazing, but any unit down the road is also going to be good. Because, guys, you do have your ride line great units, and they gave power plus five. But what if they give something that restands? Ooh. Yeah, you're right. So now you can all the power that gives that would be great. So now you're getting all these powers and getting these units on the board for free and keep calling them back from drop. And now you can use the restanding effect because you know you have all these resources now because the orders basically and units pay for the, all the costs. You're thinking something like a general, like going back off some of the old Aqua Force. It stands itself, loses 5k, but doesn't have a requirement for a specific vanguard. Exactly. Would be cool. Exactly something like that. Like strong. We don't know what we're gonna get, and then. We still haven't seen like an Aqua Force build technically. We still haven't seen a Mega Colony build. We still haven't seen like a Neo Nectar build. So there could be like this whole blooming power unit. There's a lot of it, going big or wide. They can go wide, and there's a lot of width for it. Yeah, and the way they're building these ride lines is because they're very lean. Yeah. The only thing you really need is your ride line and what your gimmick of your deck is. The gimmick of Zorga is I play orders. Uh, the gimmick of um, what's his name? Let's go with Orphist. Or, you just need worlds. You just Any need world. worlds. That's it. You're, he, his ability makes all your units for you, so anything you can put in the deck later down the road so always, is going to make the deck better. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Eugene. All he wants to do is just have your, your opponent have no rear guards. So obviously just retiring things is good. So anything after that you add to the deck, you can call the top of your deck and just plus from it. Any kind of on-place effect in that would be terrific, mm -hmm. especially if it gave Vanguard power. Yeah. Which you kind of already seen a simple effect. Yeah. Have you seen that yet, by the way? Uh, I haven't seen it played, no. No, no. I'm talking about the grade three. The grade three. They I got lead last night. No. They got a grade three that uh, when your Vanguard attacks, if your opponent has two or less rear guards, uh, you can put it into oh, your soul and give it a crit. crit. The crit. That's amazing. You know what's funny part is? Back to where we're talking about deck building. You can run that in Nirvana. Yeah. You, if you can give your opponent's board low enough and use, you know, Viriana to pop their board, you can put these in your back row since you don't use your back row often. Swing with Vanguard, suck them into your soul, and make your Vanguard a threat. If you're if you're brave enough, you can use it with the new grade three we already got. It's going to multi-attack. They're going to want to block it. Oh if you God. can eat their hand enough so that they can't block Nirvana, here's just a crit. Wait, 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 wait. You got your Discord on your phone, right? Yeah. Bring, bring up the leaks. Is it until the end of turn or for that battle? Oh, you, you're right. That's kind of scary. Leaks, leaks, leaks. We're going off a tangent. <laughs> but, I, I feel, but that's what I mean, though, is like you look at all these cards and it's like they're it so... It is the end of that battle. You're not going to over-trigger into obliterating your opponent, no. <laughs> but that, still. That would be hilarious. Ooh, boy. But, yeah, like deck building looks so fun now and makes it so interesting and makes it so fun because... I hated going into it regionals and seeing the exact same copy and paste that net deck all the time. Well, that's part of why when Gertwick came out in Z, everybody ran it. Mm -hmm. And you were always playing the exact same deck. Mm -hmm. Now everything's so balanced and everything's so creative with deck building that you can see different variants of everything. Even even changing two cards for four of changes a deck dramatically. And you know what's even more interesting? Yeah, hybrid builds. Like, you don't have to just play Magnolia. You don't have to play Zorg. You can play a hybrid of both. You can play the grade one and two uh, um, ride line in, of Zorga in Magnolia. It would set you up great for the grade two that calls from drop. Because look at this way. You you go into your ride line, right? You you, you start with your uh, your, ne your Neopet starter. Your opponent is saying, I'm playing Magnolia, right? 
You go to your turn, you ditch, you ride the grade one from the ride line, you draw two, you ditch an order. Okay. It just has to be one order. You don't have to be alchemagicking, right? Yeah. It can be any order. It doesn't have to be a normal order. That's even better. It can be a blitz order. You're right. Ooh. Turn two, right? You discard a card to ride from ride line. You ride the grade two, you get the blitz order, you ditch back to your hand. And much closer to when it's usable, too. So you're not using your hand for one of these, so you're technically plussing. Yeah, that's true. And then after that, you ride into Magnolia. They're, and now you have all your multi-attacking. And you have a drop zone to set up with with your orders. Yes. And your rear guard. I mean, you don't have to use the drop zone. Like I'm saying, like, you, you can draw... It, it, it's place as well, is the point. Yeah, but you're technically plusing two to your hand instead of plusing two to your board. So what it does is it gives you... If you don't want to be a very offensive, right? You want to be more... I want to play calculated. I want to see how my opponent plays and then throw them on my board and go aggressive. You want to save your stuff from Eugene, for example. Exactly. So you can ride the Zorka ride line in there with just a couple of blitz orders because blitz orders, there's no reason not to ride some of these blitz orders in the deck. And use it to kind of filter your hand, to build up your hand so that you have a hand. And then when it comes to your Magnolia turn, you can just blurt it on your hand and then go ham. It's a really good... So that protects you from a lot of stuff. Uh, every... Not every, okay. A lot of the nations currently have a way to retire, mm-hmm. even even relatively early, or or horny jail. Uh, you could completely shut them down until you're ready to rush them because now you have a hand. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a really good option. For, safety is generally how I've I've played the game, and being able to play safe or aggressive is nice, especially with the same deck. Mm-hmm. And then if you think about it, like there's some decks that doesn't work really well with. Um, I think it's a uh, Brent Gate. Re- really wants you to lean toward one side or the other because a lot of prison really is it specifically states you want a prison and if you use a prison in your in the same order zone as your worlds it shuts down your worlds yeah so those it doesn't work with but it could work in the future with other stuff that comes down the road we don't know yet um we talked about with uh, Ketter yeah Ketter's just because you can mix your Brent Gate right chain Brent, Brent Gate cards in there and yeah, we're good, but um, I said bring it. Bastion. You can make Bastion. Thank you. You can make your Bastion and your uh, Hexa Orb stuff together, and kind of make it to where you're like, okay, cool. Well, now I know when I'm going to drive check and manipulate the top of my deck while also having these great threes that beat your face in. Yeah. At that point, you could even you could even put more of the very aggressive grade threes. So, Ooh. thinking of it, you're running four Hexa Orb. You're gonna. You could run four of the. Ditch lets you draw so it replaces itself, mm-hmm. or the multi attacking grade three it just got. You have a bunch of grade threes in there. I got even better. Throw Bastion's ride line in Ooh. Hexa Orb. Now, you're granted you're not going to get the grade two bonus. No, but, but still. You get the free call off the grade one, and then you have access to all these grade threes to fill your board down. And these grade threes are not specific to needing Bastion. One of them is, but. The rest are not. They'll still get, get good effects off. Yeah. And that's a much bigger power threat to deal with after Hexa Orb swings. Yeah. Because a Bastion only does is restand and get plus two. Yeah. Mo- most of the great threes in Bastion do their effects and give you the threat on their own. Yeah. So you can already imagine how that plus <laughs> the power buff of a Hexa Orb giving the triggers on top of it. God forbid there'd be a front trigger in that. <laughs> imagine, imagine the power of Bastion with triple drive. No, thank you. I don't want to play that. I don't want to play against that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's that's a, that's very diverse. I'd say Cater right now probably has the most diversity for builds mm-hmm. because all it needs is grade threes mm-hmm. of any name, any nature, or triggers, and every deck runs them. They have to. Mm-hmm. So you, you have a really good setup no matter what you do with that, really. Mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, Dark States. Obviously, like, you can run the Bruce Red line inside of uh, Bear Magnus. Yeah. Because sometimes it's, I, it's, 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 some, it's debatably better because it's more of a guarantee you're going to get to your stuff instead of you having to wait for it. Yeah. Which could be good or bad, depending on the cards that get shown down the road. Depends on if you're running turbo or not. But, yeah, that could be very uh-huh. good. Now, granted, it's really hard to mix in the a lot of Bruce's stuff because it has a lot of final crush. Yeah, there's there's a couple of limits here and there. For for example, you can't throw 
if you don't throw Trickster, you can't throw any overdress stuff in Eugene mm -hmm. at all. But you also can't throw too much Trickster stuff in there because then Eugene doesn't go off. But if you look at um, the double rare for Dark States, the grade one is on place, still charge, and you can still blast three to draw a card once per turn. Yeah. It can go in anything. So Bruce already makes use of it, but if you really wanted to and you have the excess amount of soul or you don't know you think you're going to get there, but you can definitely get there next turn, you can soul blast three to draw on Bear Magnus because you have plenty of soul. As long as you can stay at 10, there's enough pressure in that deck to really put some damage in. Yeah, and you can keep your hand up and don't have to worry about you know doing the multi-attack. Granted, I don't see why you wouldn't want to do that, but... Other than resources, I mean. But I just find it interesting that you can have hybrid builds now. You can you can look at a starter and you don't know what's coming. Yeah, you're right. You won't know what's coming until they get to their grade three. And even then you don't know what's coming. You know why? Because you can put in the other grade three. No, no, no. Let's take Header, for example. Okay. You're doing your persona ride, your persona ride, your persona ride. You're you're triple driving, right? You want a finisher? Ride a bastion late, ran, random in the game. Yeah. That'll get you your multi attack instead of your triple drive, especially if you're close enough to. And you probably you know are. You're getting. And you probably already have the grade two that restands itself when you hit a trigger. So you're stacking your deck with the, the, looking at the top of your deck, right? So you already have a grade three that's going to restand itself when you hit a trigger, and then if you know you're hitting a grade three on top of it, you have another rear guard that's restanding on top of it. So you have five attacks. Now that you've mentioned it, I want to try it. <laughs> See, like it's what I'm saying though. It's like it makes you like creatively think about how to build this stuff. It's 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 good. I like it. Deck building has always been one of my favorite things, but Vanguard hasn't had much of it like we mentioned. It was mm -hmm. very static. And now there's a ton of it all at once. And just, just and just in set one. Like I said, it's even gonna get better as the more sets come and expand because set two, we've already confirmed that they're supporting all ten builds. Yeah. And on top of that, two new ride lines. That's that literally doubles the number of things currently in play. No, 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 it doesn't double. Double? No. No, it just adds two new more builds. Oh, to two, two, two total. Okay. Yes, two new ride lines. That's it. Okay, that's a little different from what I heard. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, just two new ride lines, but it gives two nations are going to have more, even even more options for a ride line, and different builds, and they're probably going to get a lot of width. And they're also going to probably introduce more li ride lines down the road for different nations, not just you know two random extras. And this is before we get. The other nation. <laughs> yeah, this is all before we even get Lyrical Monasterio. Which, God forbid, what that's going to be. There's a ton of width there. They could do collabs with anything in the world and go, it works with all of it. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> you will play Bang Dream and Monster Hunter together? <laughs> go for it. <laughs> oh my God, that's not about that. Yeah, yeah that's it's literally stuff. like, it's literally a wise player's dream. <laughs> it's literally like saying and going into wise and be like, I want these two animes to exist in one pl place. And they do. That's, yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't even considered adding Lyrica yet until because, right now. Because we know Bermuda Triangle is in the Lyrical Monasterio, but we're also going to have uh, Token Rambu in there. So you're going to have mermaids and sword boys in one day. <laughs> my weeaboo mermaids over here. Oh, my God. I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining the people who pick this deck up. For that nation. The, you'll never know what you're going against. Not until they actually play it. I mean, it's, but again, though, you never know what you're going against anything anymore. Until you see a definite grade three. Even, and even then. And then, even then, like I was saying earlier, you can technically just tech a Bastion or so and just as a finisher. Oh my god, I'm just imagining that. Just imagine somebody playing uh, Bear Magnus, right? <laughs> they're playing the Bear Magnus game. You think they're going for Bear Magnus. And out of nowhere, Bruce, you. <laughs> they drop a Bruce. And it has the soul. Oh, wait, no, 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 that wouldn't work. Because you technically you have to wait a turn with Bruce on the... You could Bruce into Barrow Magnus. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have the soul. True. It doesn't work as well. If you go Turbo Bruce. It works in, uh, in uh, Magnolia, though. Yeah. Whew. After you get your uh, Magnolia turns off and getting your multi-attack... You decide you just want to do some versatility and make a board back. You write a Zorga and start Alchemagicating immediately after. That's a different level kind of pressure, too. Your opponent wouldn't have the ability to set the resources aside needed to suddenly change the game's pace. Yeah, because That's you, really can, good. Because you can just, just sit in there playing this aggro, multi-attacking game. Because you, you don't even have the Persona ride. Thinking about that now. You really don't. You just have one Magnolia in your ride deck. And the rest of your deck is Zorgas. I, 
uh, once again, now that you've mentioned the idea, I want to test it. Because you can have the ride line for Zorga, right? And yeah. just have a Magnolia in your ride line. So you're attacking, you're doing all this stuff that Zorga would do. That'll give you such whiplash. <laughs> I know, right? So you're doing all this stuff that Zorga would do, riding up, and then you get to a Magnolia and you start multi tanking You're like, okay, well, never mind. I'm going to get some Magnolia. And then I know where they go, I ride a Zorga and I'm going to Alchemagic of this board out. I'm like, they're like, like what is going on? <laughs> I've already changed tactics. No. <laughs> and it's funny because technically, depending on the game state, you can just, you know, decide which one you want to be on. Yeah. Like, okay, well, cool. I just want to keep beating them down because, you know, they're going to keep, I can keep willing them down. I'm just going to stay on Magnolia and I'm going to keep counterblasting and getting four attacks. All I have to do is just play a generic order. Yeah. And, and even then you're setting yourself up for if you need to play Zorga later. Yeah. Because you can just run the ride line grade one and twos in the deck. Just be like, all right, I need resource. We're going to sack these triggers, and then we're going to uh, counter charge and still charge, and these will get plus fives and plus ten. so these are still like 25 columns. And that'll, God forbid, Care Bear be one of those. <laughs> oh, my God, no, think about that. Yeah, this is 15, and then you use Magnolias on the grade one, and it becomes a 15 attack in the back row. Yeah. So you're attacking for 15 to 15. These are pokes that are getting hit in your vanguard. And, and then, like, like I said, when you feel like you need, like, a reset and you're running out of like, resources, you just alchem magic your board back. Ooh. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. After your opponent's like, you know, you wield your opponent down and then you know they don't have the resources, like, all right, I need power. I'm going to alchem magic everything back out <laughs> after they tread going after all my rear guards and wasting all the resources to get rid of my rear guards. Yeah. I'm just going to freely put all this back out. Yeah, and that gets big. That gets big really quick with the stuff that's in the that's in the nation. Even better, do it reverse. <laughs> no, no, you play the Zorga game, and then when you feel like you can just go, you want to push for extra pressure, you ride a Magnolia for some extra rearguard attacks. Yeah, and and it'll hit. It'll always hit thanks to Magnolia. Yeah, it gets interesting with these hybrid builds. This makes me wonder, though, like, how would you do with, like, hybrid with other nations? Like, it's hard to do with some of the stuff in the other nations. Yeah. Like, Braingate, you, you're not doing it, no, period. You can't. You, you can't, can't do it right now. You, maybe in the future, but as of right now, there's there's literally no way to do it. Yeah. Which makes me think that whenever Set 2 is adding these new ride lines, it might be for that, just to give them a generic ride line. They do of, need something kind of generic. I could see it. Um, You can kind of do it in Dark States. And not really. You can't really do it in dark states, and you're very limited in terms of any level of actually efficiency in Dragon Empire. Because if you choose to run overdress, you have to run a lot of overdress. Mm -hmm. And there's not much retire power in there outside of Oh cool, I had to Soul Blast 2 for Viriana. Actually, I disagree. You run your core for Viriana, right? Okay. But you do not run Naverna. Oh, that is a different setup. Mm -hmm. So you still got your Trick Stars in your set, in your deck. You still got your Arcus. You still got your uh, Valiente? Valiant, Valiente. Valiente, I think oh. it is. But um, you still got those in your deck, right? Yeah. But you can technically run the Eugene Ride Line and build up your soul, right? And all you have to do is just pop one rear guard to use his ability. So yeah. you can use his ability, rest two rear guards, rest your Trick Stars. <gasps> oh, you can rest oh. the Trick Stars. Pop the rear guard, look at the top, call back your back row, and then overdress on top of them standing. Yeah. Okay. I'm feeling it. You I'm terrified it? of it. I'm feeling it. Yeah, you see, but it, it, makes so, it makes you think. It, it, does, it does take a little bit of the power away, but given the amount of destruction, it makes up for it. And it gives you a board preference because technically you're not using your hand to make a board. And you're playing this retire engine too because your very end is going to... You build the soul, and you can use the Virianas to soul blast to pop their stuff. Yeah, which just further allows you to use Eugene. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't need to, you can start with Eugene and then move into Viriana. Exactly. Like, if you really want to, you can just keep some uh, Nirvanas in your deck and just run a Nirvana late in. That could work really well, depending on what we see in set two. If we ever see a grade one or a Trickstar variant that gets Overdress, mm -hmm. it automatically becomes lethal because if, if Trickstar had Overdress right now in the back row, it would be a 15 booster. Mm. That's... Field optimization is what it needs, and Eugene allows that. It would be a great first ride. Yeah. 
So I gotta say, I, it's gonna be fun experimenting with some hybrid builds. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, that's hard to talk on that. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If but, not, go watch it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And if you're watching us on YouTube, go check out Anchor and Spotify and Google Podcasts because we're all on there. And so is this podcast. <laughs> we're, it's everywhere. It's everywhere now, yeah. And if you're also on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and share this with more of your friends, family, etc. Yeah, everyone. But, and definitely leave a like because I think that helps. <laughs> It'll help get exposure. It'll help it get farther. Exactly. And that way you can see more news about Overdress and Vanguard and hopefully more stuff than Overdress. <laughs> we might talk about V-Series and Premium down the road, but for now it's Overdress because that's where the hype is right now. It's where the hype is, and it's where the most potential is. Exactly. But that was episode six. I think six. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>